In the early hours of March 13th, SpaceX's latest Starship prototype, SN11, attempted a high altitude flight test. This was the fourth 10 km flight test of a Starship prototype. Prior to this, only Starship SN10 managed to successfully land in a single piece, although the rocket exploded several minutes later. Starship SN11 lifted off in a very foggy condition where we could just barely see the rocket. To give a quick overview of the flight, SN11 completed its natural ascent, did a successful belly flop maneuver and transferred the controls to the aerodynamic surfaces of the prototype. SN11 had a good control descent as you can see on your screens. Everything was looking good until the Raptor engines fired for the landing burn. The live feed from SpaceX just freezed at T plus 5 minutes 49 seconds and there was just audio for the next few seconds. Here's the view from lab address camera. You can clearly see a bright orange flash where the Raptor engines ignited and then there were just debris all over the place. It's clear that something caused the rapid unscheduled disassembly just after the Raptors ignited for the flip maneuver. However, no one knows for sure what the real problem was except the SpaceX team itself. Based on the available data that SpaceX's Starship team gathered, Elon Musk gave some updates on Twitter. So there were some problems with two of the three Raptor engines of Starship SN11 during the ascent itself and they just could not reach optimum chamber pressure for the flip maneuver. However, engines can perform at lower chamber pressures, so something else might have played a major role in triggering the RUD. We will get to know more about the situation after SpaceX's team will analyze the debris and the remaining pieces of Starship SN11. This flight surely didn't go as per plan. After SN10 landed in a single piece, it was largely thought with fair confidence that Starship SN11 would be the first to achieve soft landing. But after this rapid unscheduled disassembly of SN11, the important question that arises here is how will this affect SpaceX's future plan for the Starship program? First, let's take a look at what were the plans before SN11's flight. SpaceX successfully completed the stacking of Super Heavy Booster's first prototype, BN1. The 70 meter tall booster is an integral part of the fully and rapidly reusable rocket system. BN1 is a pathfinder for SpaceX as they basically learn how to actually build and transport such a tall booster. Elon Musk recently wrote on Twitter that BN1 will eventually get scraped and they already have made design changes for the next prototype, BN2. And interestingly, he also added that BN2 will be taken right to the orbital launch mount as early as April with several engines mounted. So with this, it is fairly clear that SpaceX will just not lift the foot from the accelerator and will continue the rapid iterative development of Starship and Super Heavy. The next Starship prototype, SN15, is currently in the mid-bay and is expected to be rolled out to the launch pad in the near future. Starship SN15 is going to have some major upgrades over its predecessors. Elon Musk mentioned in a tweet that the prototype will have hundreds of improvements across all the systems including the structures, the avionics, the software and even the Raptor engine itself which has directly or indirectly have been the major cause of failure for all the high altitude flight tests. As always, if SN11 shows some unique cause of failure, then SN15 will need some retrofitting which can cause a few days of delay. As discussed in a previous video, SpaceX has an ambitious goal of attempting an orbital flight test with Starship and Super Heavy as early as July this year. Even though this date was already very optimistic, Starship SN11's RUD might push it further ahead. You see, if SN11 was successful in landing, it was thought that Starship SN15 might target even higher altitude flight test. But after SN11's failure, this might not be on the cards anymore. Starship SN15 will most probably have to go for another 10 km flight and demonstrate the landing capabilities before attempting higher altitudes like 20 or 50 km. However, there are already parts till Starship SN20 under construction, so we might not see much delay if Starship SN15 lands successfully. SpaceX have plans to reach orbit with Starship SN20 and Super Heavy Booster BN3. In order to survive the brutal conditions of orbital re-entry, orbit-capable starships will have full heat shields and will need to be structurally capable of withstanding such high temperatures and vibrations. Elon Musk also wrote on Twitter that major technology upgrades will indeed be with Starship SN20. These orbit-capable starships will have full heat shields, stage separation systems and will also be highly reliable in at least the ascent part of the trajectory. He also added that once we have orbital flight tests, there will surely be a lot of rapid unscheduled disassemblies along the way as these starships will not only need to survive the re-entry but also be structurally sound enough that they can relight the engines and land successfully. 
So for those who thought that SN11 displayed great fireworks and we were unfortunate to not see them due to the fog, the orbital ones are going to be even more spectacular. Starship SN11's failure will surely push the future plans a bit, but it does look like it won't be too long before we see the next Starship flight. In the near future, we will also see some super heavy booster tests along with the completion of orbital launch mounts construction. We can assume with fair confidence that Starship will attempt the orbital flight test this year and also show some more fireworks in the process. That's all for this video. What are your views on Starship SN11's flight? Do let me know in the comment section. If you like the content, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.